Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to tell you how we can use SPSS with the R extensions to run a quantile regression. Well, there's basically two things I need to explain first. So first off, what are the R expansions or R essentials? That's like an add-on or plugin for SPSS, which allows us to use more or less parts of the R functionalities. Or in other words, this allows you to use new and additional commands in SPSS. If you never heard about this, feel free to visit the corresponding unit in this course where I explain first off in more detail what they are and also how you can install them. With this, well, as a preliminary comment, let's then go to quantile regression. Well, what is quantile regression? Why could we use this? Well, it's basically an alternative approach to the mean-based regression that we usually use. So, in other words, whereas um, normal regression is based on like taking the average distance from the line, from the regression line, we can do something similar but based on a median or on quantiles. And that's basically what quantile regression is all about. The big advantage of using quantile regression is to actually check whether our coefficients that we determine remain constant for all different parts. Well, what do I mean by this? We can see this in a moment when I restart this and get some results. So here, if you want to use this, you installed the R essentials, activated this function, then you can go to regression. And down here in the first part, we find quantile regression. And well, the upper part looks as a normal regression approach, which we know. We have a dependent, we have a list of independent variables. So for example, I can start again with my typical example, trying to explain weight by people's height. And then, usually, he starts with the median. So this is 0.5. However, I can add additional quantiles here. So if I don't want to have only the median, but for example, the first and third quartile as well, I'm just going with them, I could add any values, as we see here, between 0 and 1. So any quantile. However, if you go to relatively small quantiles, so in relatively small steps, then you should have a corresponding number of observations. So here, only using those three, and I click OK, and I directly get my results here. First for the first quarter, median, third quarter. And they can be read similarly to what we know from regression results. So here, that's the coefficients. Then we don't have some kind of t-test or stuff like this, but we get a confidence interval for each of those coefficients. And we just check whether zero is inside the confidence intervals. This tells us whether zero is a possibility or whether this value, the coefficient, is significantly different from zero, if zero is not in a confidence interval. And well, if we compare the three results, what we see, first off, the intercept is always increasing, uh, decreasing, and the slope parameter is consistently increasing. Well, while the first part is actually what we expect, we expect with an increase in quantiles to either have an increasing or decreasing intercept, this makes sense also if you would illustrate this graphically because the curve moves upwards or downwards. But that's the critical part. The slope parameters, they should always be constant. So something like this here should not occur. So what does this mean? This means for people with a lower weight, the effect of height is less strongly developed as for people with a higher weight. 
So the importance of weight increase uh, of height for weight increases with the weight itself. So we do not have a typical linear relationship, but a slightly sloped one. Well, let's try to illustrate this. If I build a chart out of this, like a scatter plot, could go to graph, scatter plots, stuff like this, and put weight here, height here, and we get this graph down here. Well, you see the main part, this looks more or less linear. But we have those outliers here, which pull this in the later part a bit upwards. So we have a light, very small slope like this, which is not really linear, but a bit upwards bound. So it could be a bit exponential or quadratic in nature. This is actually what we see here with the increase in coefficients. So the development of the coefficients tells us something about what the real development of our function is. And well, thereby, if all of them change, all of them are consistently different from zero, we know that the linear effect can no longer be kept. And while the big advantage of this is, while I can do a scatter plot like this, if I only have two variables, as in the example here, I could still compare this if I have a lot of variables at the same time. And well, I might be able to do a three dimensional scatter plot, but there it stops. The quanta regression approach allows me to consider as many independent variables as I like. So this is a very neat tool to test the assumption that the effect is constant over all parts of our dependent. And well, that's done everything I wanted to mention in the context of quanta regression. And I hope you enjoyed this session. And if you want to see additional parts on SPSS, feel free to visit the rest of this course have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.